Well, I'm excited to welcome everybody back to another edition of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. I am your co-host, Dr. Craig Spodak, along with Dr. Peter Bolden. What up? And our esteemed guest, Eric Ray from Podium. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? We're excited to be here. And uh, is this, this is our first, oh, it's our second podcast of the new year. We had Christopher Coachman on uh, just before, and now uh, our Eric Ray. So we're really happy to have you here, Eric. Eric, where are you coming to from? So I'm originally from Canada. Don't hold it against me. Uh, currently live in Salt Lake City, Utah. That's where Podium's based. Cool. Well, we speak Canadian. I think we have a lot of uh, listeners from Canada. No, we don't. All you do is say A at the end. Well, yeah. that's Canadian. It's just oh, okay. like... Uh, a boot. Like, yeah, out in a boot in Canada. So let's get down to brass tacks here. Eric, you run a company called Podium. And Wait, uh, Eric, I have a question. Yeah. I have a question before Look we start. That. Eric, are you old enough to watch the movie Strange Brew? Do you remember Strange yeah. Brew? Uh, I, so I was a little young, but when I moved to the U.S. to go to college, every person I met was like, we got to watch Strange Brew, man. That put Canada on the map for the U.S. Yeah. Like all we could talk about was A, Ozer, and A, and Ozer. I'd never seen it until I moved to the U.S., and I've seen it about 20 you times. Got, you got to Netflix that tonight. Sorry, sorry to interrupt your intro, Craig. No, it's all good. It's basically like what Borat did for Kazakhstan, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no one knew about Kazakhstan until Borat's nice. I like it very much, the podium. <laughs> all right. Are we ready to get down to serious stuff here, guys? Serious. Wait, right, serious space. Jokes. Has everybody got their jokes out? Okay. Yeah, serious space. Go. Okay, so let's learn about Podium because I was actually giving a lecture in Dallas uh, about a year ago and a dentist named Paul Etchinson, um, he's on the podcast, so shout out to Paul, he's got his own podcast now. Uh, everybody's got a podcast, Eric. You know, this is what we do now. Should be drilling, but we're doing podcasting. But <laughs> Paul told me about Podium and he said, listen, you got a lot of Google reviews, I got a lot more. And um, I looked and he had been established in practice only a handful of years uh, and had a ton of Google reviews, and he told me about Podium. And at the time, I was using different forms of um, revenue harvesting software. Uh, and what I loved about Podium is it actually made a huge dent in the number of reviews you have. So if you don't mind, and also one other thing that I found very intriguing, someone told me it might be folklore, so we're going to dispel or substantiate this fact, that Podium has money that's been invested from Google. Is that a true statement? I can confirm, yeah. They, wow. invest in, they invest in our most recent funding round earlier. That, uh, that, that's pretty legit. Damn. That's pretty legit. So get, get right into uh, what Podium is, what's your value proposition, and give us your, um, your, your uh, background, if you don't mind. Yeah, so my background is very interesting. I graduated from school here in the U.S., so came, to, came from Canada to the U.S., went to college, studied computer science. Um, really the whole reason we started Podium is my dad owned a tire shop, which is not as lucrative as dental practices, but it was, it was a good business. And I just saw he had these, this problem where he was awesome when his customers got face to face, but anything that went from online to offline was just bad. And it, it back, you know, eight, 10 years ago, that was new and my dad didn't know what to do. So Anyways, I saw that unfolding as I was in college and high school and I worked at this tire shop growing up and uh, so did that, went to school, graduated, went and worked for the UN in Austria. So cool. yeah, realized that the world's largest bureaucracy was not going to be a place for me to excel. And so I, my wife and I moved back after about a year and a half uh, back to Utah where she's from and I had had this thing, this problem that my dad's tire shop had, which was basically two things. Number one, a tire shop's not that sexy. So no customers think, Hey, I had a great experience. I'm going to go leave a review. But if they think that you got screwed, they're going to yep. go online and get you. Right. So that was problem. Number one, problem. Number two was that interaction from, Hey, I find you on Google or Facebook or your website or wherever else online. And then I want to actually ask some questions and choose you as a, as a dentist or a tire shop or whatever. That process is just so antiquated and it's not smooth. And so what we were, so basically podium started as solving those two problems. We focused primarily in the beginning on that first problem, which is reviews. 
And the whole thing for us in the beginning was these businesses, uh, specifically dental practices, you see tons of patients every day. You do great work typically, but nobody ever thinks to write about it unless they feel like you drilled one too many cavities or you botched something or they, you know, their, their veneers didn't work out as well as they thought, then they're going to go online and, and get you. And when we started four years ago, most of the companies were talking about how do you push down the negative reviews? And I don't know if you guys have saw this a couple of years ago. That was like the big thing is, Hey, we help you minimize the negative and we help you respond to the negative reviews. Nobody four years ago was talking about how to get the majority of your patients talking, which are happy, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You're going out of business pretty quick. So we focused from the beginning on let's make sure we can get reviews from a high percentage of your patients. And by doing that, we're going to get a really nice mix of reviews and you're going to have a great rating. You're going to have patients walking in the door. So I built the first version of the product because I have a computer science background and my co-founder and I in Utah started selling it door to door to dentists and car dealerships. Cool. And how long ago was that? So we started in 2014. Oh, wow. And yeah. We started it out of the spare bedroom of my apartment. And uh, by the time we had hired our second employee and fourth kind of team member, my wife said, Hey, like you're crowding me. And like, she'd come home from work and we'd be in the living room eating pizza. <laughs> she made us move out. We moved into a, uh, this old, old building above an old bike shop in this downtown area. And, uh, from there, so that was in 2014, 2015, we moved into this bike shop and ran the business out of there. And then fast forward to today, we're, we have 275 employees. Wow. Uh, we're Damn. in six different verticals. We've raised about 40 million bucks from Google Damn. and things like Excel. So you're like a, you're like a crypto, you're like a Bitcoin. You, you just exploded. Our, <laughs> yeah. our growth curve has been similar to that of Bitcoin. I just hope that it doesn't have the dip that it's having today. Today, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's been really successful. And I, I mean, we weren't the only ones trying to solve these problems back four years ago. I, I, I don't know. We can go in a little later about why. So I want to dive into this a little bit um, um, because this is something that, that I <laughs> – struggle with on a couple a couple different platforms of uh obviously the reputation management is what we're kind of talking about yeah, right yeah. i'm fine talking and about that. do what i'm I, we're good to just focus on that if you guys want no well that i mean I, we can talk about your product but i i do want to i mean obviously every dentist listening to this understands the importance of of online reput reputation management and, and aggregating reviews because we're realizing more and more that's the lifeline and that's how we shop and Craig and I talk about in the book we've got coming up how Amazon has almost, I mean, reviews were popular before, but Amazon, you, you won't buy a pencil sharpener that's three cents now unless you look at the reviews on Amazon. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a little being a little bit exaggerating, but you know, you look at your, your Google, um, I'm sorry, you look at your Uber driver's rating. If it's too low, like you, you bail on that ride. Right. So like society and, and the applications in our society are, are almost, um, teaching us i use the term brainwashing but you know someone was like that's not really brainwashing it's just an evolution of where we are but we're being conditioned to use condition those. there you go i'm going to change my vernacular to condition <laughs> so we're, so google and amazon and you know any other kind of review service is, is conditioning us to go towards reviews yeah. um so but we're all aware of that right how does how does what is your better, what have you built a better mousetrap? Yeah, it's, it's funny because if you look at our product, it is simple and it feels simple. And it's funny because this is not the, we're not the only people trying to solve this problem, like I said, but mm -hmm. what we do and what we've done from the beginning that has been, I think, important and one of the reasons why we've excelled is Number one, we focus on making sure we don't create an experience for the patient that we wouldn't want to have ourselves. So, okay. like, I mean, you got, you've got products that are sending out two, three, four reminders to leave a review um, on a platform that that person might not even have an account for. Right. So horrible, right? Um, your conversion rate is going to drop, and then you turn this opportunity to take a happy patient and turn them into an advocate talking about you online. And if you, if you do it wrong it can actually have an opposite effect. So we focus 100% on making sure that the patient experience 
when you're in Podium is solid, that you can leave a review on a platform that matters to both the business and the patient has an account for. Mm-hmm. And then we try to make it as simple as possible for both parties. And, and so it's not rocket science, right? We just are obsessed with that. And I think a lot of other companies, when I look at other people that have seen our success and kind of want to jump on the bandwagon, they kind of do this surface level like, hey, we can put up some links on a website and send a text out and it's just not the same. It's just like you guys, right? Like the dentists that take care of their craft and really care about the details, they're the ones that are going to succeed. True. So true. So one of the proprietary things, that I, not proprietary, but one of the things you guys employ is text because I know the uh, conversion rate and click through and re- reading is higher with text than email. Yeah. So, um, but, but I, but I, I know that you do that, but what I, what I'd love. Not email, not email, not no, email. The, the email open rates now are, uh, I think sub 5%. No, I, I know text has a higher open rate than email. I thought you said text and email. Sorry, but no, 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 no. I'm sorry if I did, I misspoke, but, um, I know you guys do that, but, but let's, let's go over the nondescript, uh, competition that you have in the space right now. I don't want to mention any names, but you know, there are many players and there's a lot of white label players. There's one large player and everybody's white labeling, labeling that person. So it's sold as a, a software, but you have a, a lot of different brands that are slapped on top of it. Yeah. Uh, what, what is your USP or unique selling proposition? What's the thing that makes you guys work so well versus what the guys out there, the majority of you guys are doing? Tell us what, what that is. Well, you guys mentioned it already. Like, one of the things that's huge is we do have a financial investment from Google. So we just have access to certain parts of Google's APIs that other companies don't. And so that's really helpful. For example, we can get a review on Google without actually having to launch a patient to google.com. Got which it. If you do that, if you do, when yeah. you, the minute you do that, you lose them, right? You have no idea whether they complete the review, whether they don't, whether it even loads. So, that's yeah, we awesome. could all agree the more steps to this process, the yep. dramatic drop off drop off yeah. it is. Absolutely. And then I, I think it's just like it's probably the exact same as with your businesses. Is there are leaders and there are followers in every industry. Mm-hmm. And it is, you know, you can at surface level, and it's the same with you guys, you can look at two different dentists and they can look on the surface like the same experience and the same quality of care, but when you really dig in, that's when you actually see the who's leading and who's following. And I think with us, we, we were the first ones to ever actually figure out a way to get a Google review via mobile through a text message. And we've just kind of stayed ahead of the pack the whole time. And everybody else just feels like they're kind of playing catch up. And we even had things back two and a half years ago where one of these other companies in the space was, taking screenshots of our product, switching out the name of the company and putting it on their website. No joke. I have, yeah. well, I have, Peter and I have had that happen too. Yeah, yeah it's Peter crazy. And I, yeah, yeah, Peter but, and I have had our cases taken that we posted. That's gonna say, that's the same thing as case, as case um, kind of poaching, right? Well, and just, well, yeah. Yeah, and I just think like, if you're trying to build a big business and a successful business, the last thing you should be trying to do is just ride the coattails of some other, Yeah. It damages you. I had a class. So the pr- mind for so the problem that the problem that you're solving then is basically you're you're making it easy through aggregation, right? And because you have an API, you're making it easier than than some of the lengthier review processes. I'm, what I'm trying to do is is because a lot of us have our review process. We go in there and we talk to the patient. You know, we ask them, um, "Hey, would you mind leaving a review? Or if you had a great experience, leave a review." And you just automate this. Is that right? And it integrates yeah. with software or, or software and it automates it. It sends a text and it's, is it geofenced? Is that, is that correct? No, we don't geofence because basically what we do is we make sure that we're adhering to the guidelines of Google, Facebook, and any of the other review sites. Mm-hmm. And so we don't geofence it, but we make sure that if somebody's going to leave a review, that it's going to turn into an actual review and not get filtered out. So this is something that Craig and I argue about mainly because I have, uh, fewer Google reviews than he does. And he's like, man, I've got like 600 reviews. And I was like, and I look at him, I'm like, did that get you more patience than when you had 400 reviews? Like, because he was so excited. And so what's the math? 
on yeah, that? So, What's the stats on that? So I think there is a point where you get to a critical mass and it might, the next review you get, unless it's maybe negative, doesn't have as much of an impact as the, the reviews that came before it. But I will say, so we, I fly, uh, actually Google's headquarters, like where they actually run their review product out of is not in the United States. So I fly uh, internationally once a quarter and meet with this team. Mm -hmm. In um, India? Uh, not India. It's actually a, it's a way better place than that. Um, and are you under NDA not to say where this is? Bali. Yeah, it's so Bali. Uh, we don't know. It's actually, uh, it's in Asia somewhere, but anyways, <laughs> that narrows it we, down a lot. It does. Huge, small, small continent. Uh, anyways, they've actually told us that they're thinking of starting to retire reviews in a way, if that makes sense. So your, your 600 reviews won't go away. Like you, they're still searchable. People can read them, but the actual impact it has on the star rating and the total, like the star rating and the ranking on Google local is going to be impacted the older the reviews are. So I think today the you know, once you get a critical mass, it's recency is still really important to the Google's algorithm. Right. And they come out and said that, but you know, there's a point of diminishing returns. Is that kind of well, what you're saying? There's a point in diminishing returns from a consumer perspective, right? So if I'm, a, right. if I'm looking for a, a provider, if you have 500 or 600, I think I, I look at the reviews, I see the rating, I, I, I search through some of them. I can make a decision pretty easily, no, no matter if you have five or 600, but the, the algorithm is what actually requires you to have those recent fresh reviews keep coming in. I'm right. going to make a segue into something because you just, you just uh, spoke about it. And so you talked about the algorithm and because you're partners with, with Google, I'm going to use this opportunity to, to ask you a question. So no one knows the algorithm of rankings, right? You're smiling because you know, it's going to be like, Oh, God. Um, no one knows the algorithm, right? I suspect that there, that it's probably a third is now where am I going with this is, is social relevance and, and review management and stuff is a huge part of, of SEO now, right? And how you rank because it's relevance. And obviously Google is all about relevance and who's talking about who and who's getting reviewed and who's active and who's updating. Um, you know, whereas it used to be, how many links did you have, right? right? How many outbound or inbound? I mean, how many inbound links did you have and from what domain and all that stuff? And that was the currency of ranking uh, once upon a time. And I think that there, it's still probably valid, like how, how, you know, that's the social, that's the street cred on the internet in terms of just the, the linkability. But can you talk about, about how you think reviews might play a part in the overall ranking of our site? So it's not just look at the site, right? So I'm trying to explain the value, yeah. Yeah. the value of getting reviews beyond just the review. Yeah, it's huge. So it turns out that, the amount of user generated content that your business has online about you is a way better predictor than how many links link out. Like you said, right? Mm -hmm. It's percent true. Google's figured this out. So is mm -hmm. Facebook, all these other companies, all these other platforms. And now they're using that a lot more heavily than in the past when it was just, Hey, how many links can I get? How many blog posts can I do? So hundred percent correct. The cool thing that you're starting to see with Google is they have their Google local guides program, which is the, consumer side of reviews. So if I leave 50 reviews, all of a sudden I become a level one local guide and then um, all of a sudden my reviews are actually carrying more weight than somebody who's yeah. ever left a review. You know who else does that? Yeah. yeah. Yelp. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. And uh, Yelp is another interesting topic that, well, uh, I told, I always tell Craig, I'm like, Yelp's the Holy grail of reviews because they pretty much filter all of your reviews. You know, um, it's just, it's crazy. Do you, what, what do you guys do for that? With Yelp? Uh-huh. Uh, so we don't solicit reviews on Yelp for our, for our yeah. customers. Yeah, you can't. They're terms. Yeah, exactly. You, and I don't know if you read that blog post that we wrote, but it's just, it's not a good idea. I don't personally agree with, so what there's, what Yelp is essentially saying, I, I think, is that they don't want, they don't want <laughs> to solicit reviews because they think by soliciting reviews that you are not, you are just naturally it. opposite to the positive. Right. And I get that. Like I actually think 90% of the tools that are out there that help you get reviews are biasing reviews because they say, Hey, were you happy? Yes or no. And if you say no, you go to private feedback. If yes, you go 
to leave a review. So yeah, you're biasing your reviews. So um, I agree with Yelp on that side, but I feel like if you're connected with the patient management system, if you send a review invite to almost all your customers, almost all your patients, and if you let people leave reviews, no matter if they're, you know, super happy, kind of happy, or maybe not that happy, that's a great way to get authentic content. And the thing that they don't other, they also, the other thing they don't realize because they're not based out of one of these more normal cities in the United States, they're in San Francisco. They don't realize that <laughs> a, dentist, a dentist anywhere else in the United States besides San Francisco is just not going to get Yelp reviews naturally. Like right, yeah. how many natural Yelp reviews do you guys get? Like almost none. Right. Um, yeah. So it's funny because they want Yelp to be this place where you go to discover businesses besides just restaurants. But if there's no way for you guys as, as dentists to get reviews on Yelp because you can't solicit and nobody's leaving them naturally because it just doesn't make sense and people don't think to do it, then how is Yelp ever going to be a really important well, place for you guys? Well, one of the interesting things is that if you look at like review 1.0, like the origination, you had separate review sites. The web has become more vertically integrated. So Facebook was a social tool. Now it's a review tool. Amazon was an online store. It's a product review store. It's the, the, the sticky thing about Amazon is not prime shipping that is dropped to your house. Mm. It's that you can actually buy, like I go to a store with the intention of buying something at a store and pull out my Amazon account to check the review. So even though I don't want to use Prime or I don't want to have it shipped to me, I still use Amazon to find out, is this a good product? Yeah. It's not yeah. costing, like Peter said. Uh, you know, I'll buy like a drill, like a Makita hand drill for $20, but I want a good one. I want a decent yeah. one. Yeah, so I totally agree. So it's all vertically integrated. So you have Yelp as an island. Google is a tool. It's an operating system for your phone. Facebook is a, so there's, so everything's becoming integrated. It's almost like, you know, the way the supermarkets have become integrated that Walmart sells milk right now. You don't yeah. have to go to four or five stores. Same thing with different websites. Oh, it, it's so true. So Google, Facebook, uh, Snapchat, all these platforms, Instagram, they, they yeah, Instagram. So they, their theory is that we are going to go back to what the internet was when it first came out, where it was like AOL. Where yeah. Copy serve, yeah. And everything is built on top of those platforms. And so that's why you see them buying all these companies like uh, Instagram and WhatsApp and all these different yeah. products because they think that if they can become that one platform. Ecosystem? Yeah. For their it's, all them. All, it's all going to become ecosystems. I think hmm. uh, I, I, if I were a betting man, I would say that if, if I were to say the most important platforms for dentists in the next three to five years – I would say Instagram. I would say if Snapchat can get their crap together, they'll be a big one. And then Google and Facebook, because those are the platforms. Like those in are that ones. order? No, not in that order. But those are the ones where people spend their time. And we're going to see so many other things start to be placed on top of those platforms instead of having mm -hmm. other little islands like you guys are talking about. So I couldn't... And, you know, kudos to Zucker, Zuckerberg for buying Instagram for a billion dollars. It was the, he was a laughing stock of the financial world for that massive overvaluation of buy Insta for 1 billion. And uh, Gary, he called it. It's, well, it was only 415 days old. So it doesn't matter. It was a massive win for him uh, because he wrecked like podium. And, I'm sorry. It's like podium. Oh, yeah, wait. exactly. <laughs> hey, Mark, if you're listening, Mark's, Mark's dad is a dentist. So maybe his dad's listening. I've heard, I've heard yeah. that. I think, so uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys would probably be cool. With Something it. tells me he's doing dentistry optionally. Just, just throwing it out there. No, I think he's practicing pretty full time. No, and that you missed the point. Like he has a billionaire son. Something tells me he's doing. Doesn't it Doesn't matter. His son's rich. He's not. Let's take yeah. what Will Smith tells his kids. I'm rich. Flows you're up, not. buddy. Flows up. All right. Well. All right. So I hear what you're saying about the, the ecosystem. But I think that's good, relevant data for <laughs> dentists because we need to be thinking in that terms in, in terms of like our marketing strategy, right? Because believe it or not, review management is a marketing strategy. Yeah. Well, sure. even, even more specifically, what Eric, I, I, I caught something you said, which is very significant. I want to make sure I encapsulated it. You said that the web is now looking at the inbound content. So web 1.0 is like how much blogging, how much stuff, how much link building, how much can I hack the system to get the, the bots or the spiders to get me more relevant now? 
it's all about who's talking about you, which is a true reflection of branding. Yeah. And branding. It's, hard, it's hard to fake, right? You can't yeah. fake real yeah. people that have uh, Facebook or Instagram profiles talking about you. You right. cannot fake that. Which is, it's good because at this point, like. It's a meritocracy, how, baby. How, yeah, how I think about it is 10 years ago, whoever had the biggest marketing budget won. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're a good dentist, a bad dentist, like whoever spent the most money on billboards, ads, radio, all that, they just won, hands down. Reviews has shifted the equation now where if you're smart and you know how to do it and you can collect reviews from authentic patients, you can win if you're a great dentist. Which it's is great. Yeah. It's so awesome because it, it shows that if you are do, providing massive value, you deserve to be successful. Well, and, and new dentists, right? Like if, I'm, if I've been around for 20 years and I'm a, a dentist and I have a huge patient base um, and I've been advertising and sponsoring the high schools for 20 years, that's a huge moat, right? Now that doesn't matter, right? Like if I'm a brand new dentist, I go out and I get 500 reviews in the first six months or year of my practice people are going to call people are going to come. So it's sweet. I, I love it. And obviously I'm a little bit obsessed with it based on the last five years of my life, but yeah, it's pretty cool. That's good. No, I'm like obsessed that. with that's, it that's too. Cool to hey, I, uh, Eric. I so I have, I have a buddy of mine who owns a company called white spark and he's in Canada too. Actually yeah. his name's Darren spark, uh, Darren Shaw. Yeah. And, um, I told him he was on the podcast way before, way before Craig, um, bent my bent my arm and wanted to jump the podcast join the podcast so i did that one solo <laughs> and but, you were uh, begging me for months god i was <laughs> anyway the the i told darren i said look i we were talking about where you see this going he has a number of products one is a review product but, but a lot of it is is um is local like local mm-hmm. rankings and local, local mm-hmm. seo is really what he specializes right. in mm-hmm. yeah the li- like local listings and stuff like yeah. that yeah Cool. So I told him, I'm like, okay, well, why is it that we are still, we have these camcorders in our pockets and we are not leveraging that from a review because you can't fake a video review. I mean, I guess you could. So is, why can't next level, like, I guess I'm begging, like, why can't it be reviews that are video testimonials? Cause those are really the Holy grail. Mm-hmm. I talked about Yelp being it, but I, I feel as though like a review testimonial is like massive. So do you see that becoming the evolution of renew reviews? Yeah. So I, I feel the same way because you can, uh, it's hard, but Man, you, it's so much faster too. Like I could bang well, out a quick, like, Hey, I just left the office. They're awesome. Go check them out. Boom. Done. Well, yeah, right? they did. Look at they did. I, look exactly. at me. You have proof. It's, it's, I actually think video is the future. Here's the problem that they have to solve is, is if all of your review content is in the form of videos, how do new patients, sit through that right like do you watch a hundred videos before you decide whether you want to transcribe well it can't it's it automatically transcribed yeah and it's not hard if, I'm, I'm not saying that it's like impossible but they haven't gotten there yet so if you notice google they've added videos they've added photos they've added q a all in the last year and that didn't mm. a year ago so they're they they know the direction it's going and that's where they are headed but there are some interesting nuances to video that you didn't have with just text reviews, right? Because how, you know, how do you capture the rating? That's probably easy, but then how do you make it discoverable? And that's even this, that's even a problem. Like we're talking about once you have 500 or (coughs) thousand reviews, Mm -hmm. if you have a thousand reviews, how does a new patient that's looking for a dentist actually sift through all of that content to make a decision? You don't. Something that Google is working hard on. Facebook is working really hard on is figuring out how to, pull the insights out of all of that content and make it really easy for people to make purchase decisions. But yeah, I agree. I, I think, I think within the next couple of years, we will see people leaving reviews via video, probably more than they're typing out videos on their or typing out reviews on their phone. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it you humans, we talked about kind of the easy button, you know, from even from a dental perspective, why, why you built a better mousetrap because you got us to hit the easy button. But yeah. I think, you know, I think we as humans kind of look for that desire on the consumer side too. So the easiest yeah. thing to do is sit here and talk rather than sit, go home, log in, text, you know, all that stuff, text and write a review, yeah. you know, typing, you know, it's easier to just sit here and review personally, but people might not, might like the, uh, anonymity of it. Right. Yeah. That, that's the other thing is, do you want to be like, Hey, I, uh, I mean, dental is not too bad, but think plastic surgery. Uh, yeah. there's probably a lot of businesses, gun stores, like, 
probably yeah. don't want to remind me to say I just bought this like two shotguns and who knows, Red right? Light. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we don't need to get into a gun conversation. But the other thing I will say <laughs> um, Wait, did you know this is called the bulletproof dental practice, right? Yeah. yeah. What's your problem with guns, bro? What the heck? <laughs> well, luckily, I'm half American, so I, I have uh, some mixed views there. No, I'm but, kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, but actually, to, to tack onto this video thing, I actually think voice is going mm-hmm. to be huge. So you've got Amazon Echo, Google Home, Siri. Um, you've got all of these voice activated. 100%. Dude, voice is the new video for 100 yeah. percent and you know who else craig you mentioned this and you you mentioned his name but i cut you off gary v is like tripling down on voice um yeah. in terms of his marketing and such because the alexa skills and all that stuff so yeah. eric i completely agree that well, that voice may be where it's at yeah because think about this right like you get in your car after you have a dental appointment and then siri just says hey eric how was the appointment and you just say oh it was awesome i loved it painless movie was good on the ceiling thumbs up okay great thanks a lot there's a review right there yeah mm-hmm. like that to me is the very so i think we're we're we like we just talked we're about closer to that for sure that yeah, we're really yeah, close yeah. To that. we've come a long ways but i think there's a ton that more that so we're... will you will your i mean this is a dumb question but your software your software will probably scale according to what google allows yeah Okay. Yeah. Well, Google's invested in them, so they're going to get a little bit of a, a head start, <laughs> right? Indicator of what's coming down the pike. Well, yeah, we get it. We do get a head start, and I, I'm happy. It's one of the benefits of having them as an investor. But the other thing, guys, is I don't know if you guys. This is a little bit nuanced because I'm in the the review space, but ninety percent of the companies that are trying to do reputation management are bad actors. Like Google does yeah. not like them. Facebook does not like them. Yelp surely doesn't like them. And when we were raising our last round of funding, which was $32 million from Google and Excel, and Excel is the venture capital firm that was the first institutional money into Facebook. Um, they went and talked to Google, like Google talked to the internal people at Google. They went and talked to Facebook. They went and talked to Yelp and asked them about us. And I think what Yelp said was we don't like the space generally, but we do like the podium guys. So it's just a really interesting space where not everybody is, most people aren't playing by the rules and they're trying to do everything they can to skirt them. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, that just hurts you guys. That yeah, just hurts yeah. the, the yeah. customers. Like we, we heard of a story that happened late last year where I think a hundred thousand <laughs> Google reviews were just erased by this big company that does the demand force. Yeah. Well, I don't even think it was demand force. I think it was somebody who's even newer in the space, but uh, I thought it was demand force. I demand force got all their reviews removed a couple years back. I do remember that, but um, there was another company that 150,000 reviews during a six month period, just gone from Google overnight, not coming back because they were doing things that Google didn't like. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. So so give, so us, I, give us I, some, I, sorry, Craig. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing is I, I been working with you guys for, um, I don't know, maybe seven, eight months. I'm up at 634 Google reviews right now. And like Pete is like, you know, Pete was with me last, uh, last week. And like, I, I get the Google alerts on my phone and it's like, it's seeing like two, three coming a day. And he's saying like, at, at what point does it become, you know, obsolete? But to your point that, that content, that freshness, I never really thought about that. You know, that if I just unplugged it and got no more Google reviews, even though I have so many, it doesn't rely upon, you know, your relevancy starts to shut down. So, so literally, let me tell you what he did, Eric. We were sitting there. I was actually visiting his office. And throughout the day, he would just kind of get his phone and scroll through and be like, look, dude, look how many I get all day long. And just like rubbing it in my face. Mine was oh, like, I'm not rubbing it in your face. Mine was just, I'm looking at mine. and it's, There's crickets chirping. And, and uh, Craig's I'll like, see, dude, they just say, come in. It's like a ticker call feed. You, out? you want me to call you out? This is what he does, rubbing in my face. Those were no. thirty thousand dollar treatment plans accepted. Right, yeah, right, literally, well, this is him. That's what we do. Yeah, literally, first two consultations. One is a receipt for nineteen thousand two hundred sixty-two dollars, and the other one twenty-nine thousand five hundred twenty-five. Come on, I might be in the wrong business. Well, oh, okay, man. Hey, there's going to be a lot of heavy lifting for those for that for that money. But anyway, we digress a little bit, and and um, I so I get it. I get the 
um, the relevancy and making it, you know, the daily and the freshness, I, I dig that. <laughs> I, I actually didn't think of that when I was thinking of the point of diminishing returns. You know, I was thinking it like a goal line, like, you know what, when you get to a couple hundred reviews, like, eh, you hit the goal. But well, and, Eric, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, and you're right from a consumer standpoint, right? Like, once you get a certain amount, there's probably, you know, more is helpful. And actually on the consumer side, sorry, uh, I'm just thinking about this. The consumer cares if the reviews are fresh. If you have six yeah. reviews, but you haven't had one in six months, I feel like as a consumer, did you shut down? Are you still even in business? Because you, yep. get, you know what I mean? But <laughs> even, even too, back to Amazon, like, like, I, you know, sometimes I'll see those products that have like 2000 reviews versus the one that's got 200 and I'm like, oh, you know, so quantity does yeah. have the power, totally. you know, it totally does. And then when you look at the Amazon reviews and, there's, there's a review. I was looking, we, my wife and I are going on vacation with our daughter and she's 18 months and I was trying to buy this blow up like thing that you put in front of the seat on the airplane that creates like a bed for the baby. Anyways, um, this is like the power of Amazon, right? As I'm looking at reviews for this blow up like little mini bed for the airplane and I see reviews from 2013 and I automatically just discredit them because I'm like, the product has probably changed five right times, now. right? Yeah. Anyways, it's an interesting thing. You Any mean, other tips for, um, you know, we have a lot of, uh, obviously this is a dental podcast. We have a lot of younger emerging dentists, um, even some in school. So all across the board, but I think primarily we have a lot of, a lot of young men and women dentists listening to this. Any tips that you could help, um, help with you gave, you gave the ecosystem thing. I think that that was a great conceptual hint is to, is to talk about it in terms of looking at the buckets that need to be filled. Um, uh, you know, because it may be an ecosystem, a standalone ecosystem, but any other, any other things that we should be aware of any new emerging tech, any new emerging trends that you're seeing in your space? Yeah. So uh, you talked about voice a little bit. Video is, isn't really interesting. The one thing I would say is I always think, and again, Uber's not a popular company today in the media, but I always think of how Uber disrupted the taxi industry or Airbnb is disrupting the hotel industry. And I just think about why they did that. And, you know, the car actually, like if you go into an Uber in San Francisco or New York nowadays, the car, the Uber is not that much nicer than the taxi cabs that used to used to take. But yeah, the thing that they've done so freaking well is they've made the experience seamless. Like the difference between flagging a cab in New York City t 10 years ago or five years ago versus I get on my phone, I tap a button, I see the car on a map coming to me, it sends me a notification, I get in, they know exactly where I'm going, I know I'm not getting screwed, and then at the end of the ride, no money changes hands, payment just happens, and then I rate and review. That experience to me, that's what I'm trying to, like at Podium, if I were to boil down what we're trying to do for every I business that. we work with, it's trying to make that experience or even just a hint of that experience exist at these businesses that we work with. And so if I'm a new practice, I'm not going to win with the, like, you know, I don't have the experience. I don't have the patience, but what I can do is I can just make my experience coming into the dentist, communicating with me, getting, answering questions. I can make that so much better than the traditional mm -hmm. dental experience that that will, that is what will win. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, that's what disrupts, right? Right. The having, seamlessness, right? Yeah, like you having, said, it's an easy button and the easy button for an Uber just happens to be, get me a ride. Right. Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. And, and then that's, if you take that and, and think, okay, well, where are my patients going to be finding me in two, three years? I would say Facebook, Google, Instagram, maybe Snapchat, and like focus on those platforms that we, that are going to be, everything else is going to be built on top of. Yeah. It's crazy. It's all about the interface. It's all about, I mean, the most precious commodity now is time and technology is showing us that everything's possible faster, cheaper, better. So, yeah. I mean, the consumer is being conditioned to expect um, massive disruptive change in the marketplace. And if you're not leading that curve, you're going to get really uh, washed ashore on that one. I believe yep. that. So what else is coming down the pike for Podium as it relates to dentistry? Because I know you have a lot of different industries. So I'm, I'm hearing that you want to make the process so much easier. So what are things that you guys are looking to add as value adds to clients? Because in my opinion, I'm looking at your company as a, as a review harvesting software, but what's coming? Review harvesting. 
Uh, <laughs> we've got to change our marketing. No, I mean, it is. In essence, it is review harvesting. It sounds like uh, organ harvesting, though. Um, okay, what, do you, what would make it sound better? Review no, no, I like it. I like it. I'm actually going to, we're going to change the website tonight. Yeah, I should. Uh, yeah. You can put my face on there. <laughs> we should. Yeah, Anyways, I don't know about that. What I would, so what would, back to this idea that like, <coughs> if we can make the experience at a, at a dental practice, even a little bit like an Uber, um, taking that idea. So we, I mean, texting your patients isn't new. I, I totally get that. That's been around for a long time. Text reminders, all that stuff. Um, I personally don't think that anybody's doing it right. <coughs> And, and so what we're doing right now is we've built over the last year and a half a communication platform that takes Facebook Messenger, text messaging, Google has a new communication protocol that they're working on, uh, working with Instagram as well. And basically the idea is take every one of those platforms that people are discovering you and make it seamless to once, make it seamless once they find you, read your reviews, decide they want to see if they want to contact you, make that experience from discovery to choosing mm -hmm. you as a business as seamless as possible through messaging. And, th and that's not just like uh, an appointment reminder with like a really robotic message saying, are you going to make it re respond Y or N? It's like, let's have real personalized communication, but scale it so that the dentist and the staff aren't flooded with messages. And yeah. workflow, right? Can we and give you a wish? Can we give you a wish list of what we want to see? Yeah, no, we should, we should offline talk about how you guys are okay, doing. Well, let's go, let's go offline. Cause Peter and I met with um, some really robust software designers um, that I'm friends with in Atlanta. And we said, this needs to happen for us um, to, to, to be relevant in the space. It was really cool. So we'll, we're happy to uh, yeah. have the conversation cause it'll better, it'll better our experience. And it'll better the patient's experience. So we'll share right. that with you offline. Sure. But um, I did want to, because uh, um, I know a couple of us have a hard stop. I wanted to point out that um, when I join with you guys, I'm a paying customer. There's no, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just a regular paying customer. But I, I did have to pay an initiation fee. And um, I negotiated with your people, uh, dental, uh, a promo for the dentists that want to sign up with your company and it waives the $300 activation fee, which is really generous. So thank you, Eric. Right. And your people, you probably don't even know you did that because your organization is large enough now, but uh, thank you for that investment. I know, um, I I've been really happy with your company and what you guys have done for me. That's awesome. And our, our setup fee has actually gone up in 2018. So that's an even better promotion. Cool. We'll post, I'll post that uh, that code, obviously. Yeah. So if y'all are interested in, in um, taking advantage of that offer from the Bulletproof Dental Practice podcast, I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, thanks for that. So, but um, we, we'd love to continue the conversation, give you some stuff that we think would be relevant for dentistry because, uh, you know, it, it's hard to build your own software. We've gone down that route. We just want something that's going to serve our patients better. And yeah. it is a cryptic, difficult process for a patient that doesn't know you to get in and, uh, and, and connect. And the guy who makes it easiest is going to win regardless of quality and all that other stuff. For sure. For sure. Price too. Like you, if your experience is twice as good as the 100%. other guys, you can charge way more. I would pay happily if I didn't ever have to get a voicemail from my dentist again. Yeah. It's but also what, what, what costs us a ton of money is no shows, last minute cancellations, stuff like that. So if there's, you know, ways to, you know, we've got some ideas to help um, reduce that and uh, that would benefit us greatly. So yeah. we, we should definitely talk offline. That'd be great. Okay. Well, Eric, we really appreciate all that, that uh, information. You know, that was really eye opening for me. And was good. I, I'm happy to know that it's just not another white labeled, you know, email based product that's saturating our market. And there's actually some real brain power and some significant investment in your R and D because we know as you improve your company, you'll be better able to serve guys like us. And then in turn, we'll be better, better able to serve our clients, uh, which is what moves the needle and the reason why we do this podcast. So thank you for the generous offer. We'll make sure we have the link in the body of the, um, of this uh, description of this podcast. And we look forward to connecting with you again. Yeah, guys appreciate it. This was fun. And I don't usually love podcasts. So yeah. <laughs> neither do we. That's why we created one. <laughs>
Oh, shit. All right. Over and out, Eric. Thanks for your time, bud. It was good to talk. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on another edition of